Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Did you release broadcast or live? We generally cut things off around the years of college in, so I would recommend you uh, leaving this one and then no, uh, adding a little off there because this one's kind of just me. So where are you at? Me? Yeah. I'm at so you're Edge, I'm, 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 oh, right. I work with Michael. I'm at that. Edgecast Horizon Digital Media Services. Dude, it's awesome. It's an awesome shot. And it's not because we're live. But <laughs> no, it's very, I mean, it's, you know, CBN, custom, live, LBS, you know, we were talking some web posting stuff. Yeah, no. Very cool. You yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm on the DevOps day planning team, so we got a, we're going to have a big docker, there's a big or container that's going to be awesome, because we've got the drone Federaz Federazzi and these local, not more or less local dockers. Um, so we're going to have somebody from, uh, what's the other, the competitor? Yeah, but there's the... The product, the core <laughs> yeah, so we have the core OS guy, which is basically what you built on that. But then to make it interesting, we've got uh, one of the um, joint guys. You know, they've been doing posting with Solar with Open Solaris for years. So it's like, okay, kids, you want to talk about containers? Let me tell you about it. If yeah, oh and it, yeah, uh, yeah, it should be very cool. I'm really looking forward to that particular thing. We have a couple of rounds of lightning talks. Um, John Willis is, you know, John Willis is going to be out there. I'll be there all four days. Good. Uh, I'm actually going to stay in the post house. Sweet. So we have uh, other already. Cool. Yeah, well, I haven't plugged that in. So, but the live stream is up. That might be live. Say anything. I like how your tripod is so much larger than the camera. Yeah. Well, hey, it's it's very portable. Yeah. I can take it to the pub with me afterwards and enjoy myself. Don't have to drop off everything in the car. So yeah, dude, I have these speakers if you wanted to use them. Okay. Just saying. Just just put like. Elevator music. Oh, I got to see a uh, social club. Wait a minute, social club. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's oh, you saw the real deal. Oh, wow. The, the percussionist, the guy that's up in yeah. the right corner. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. And one of the other guys is also the conviction guy, but I can't remember. He's obviously old. He's old and original. Old and original. Yeah. <laughs> like everything. But I'm sure the whole band's good. You know, on, <laughs> on Saturdays, on Cakes All You, 88 9 here, they play like a lot of Cuban music all day. It's, it's good stuff. It is. It's about a couple CDs. There's no right way or wrong. Everybody's going to have their own. But you, you got to hear, but you get to hear the whole big band. I mean, see it live. It's right there, yeah. So you get that the spatial stuff. And as you're, you're knocking back the rums and smoking the cubes. Do you get used to smoking the bars there? Yeah, I think we're some. Like getting Cuban cigars. Probably. Cuban cigars, I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, I drink so much of that. Because, you know, here there's like, there's like, you know, you can't smoke in bars anymore. So there, it's like if the cigars are the big deal. Where do they... Are they, are they pushing it outside? No, I didn't yeah. see anybody having to go outside to do that. But no, it was just, and basically every day we did three things. We saw something old. We saw, we went to some NGO, chatted with them about, you know, the balance tribulations of being an NGO within a, a socialist group environment. Yeah. And then, uh, because almost all of them were effectively partnered with the government, because you can't really be independent of the government in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And the, and the third thing was always like a uh, display of artistry, like maybe painters or a dance troupe or something, you know, music performance, things like that. 
Cool, right. including one of their uh, uh, musician, uh, like uh, uh, school for performing arts. But it, this was uh, second through sixth grade, huh. and some of them were amazing. This cute little ballet thing, they had a ballet troupe, they had a, a band, and they had uh, uh, third. Group. Yeah, no, so every day we had those three things for all six days that we were basically there. Oh, look, I got a work phone, yeah. Android phone. I'm, I'm hanging out with that camp, too. Yes. Swing in both ways. <laughs> I got to go to the Canary Islands two, uh, two weeks before that. Yeah. Cool. I got to go to uh, uh, La Montserrat, which is uh, basically a volcano covered island. Yeah, it's awesome. This uh, entrepreneur built uh, on one of the hills in this lava field. There was, yeah. a, there was a volcanic vent. And we built a barbecue grill on top of this vent. <laughs> and so there's a restaurant there called La Diablo. La Diablo. Yeah. Cool. And so, uh, so it's a real restaurant. People come up and they can order burgers and, fr and uh, chicken and all that stuff. But this barbecue is completely natural. <laughs> That's cool. Boy, that room was hot. Yeah, yeah. Not quite steam, but close to it. Pretty freaking amazing. So, the restaurant's up on the hill as well. And did you get a hookup? Yes. This table. I mean, we could set it up over here. Yeah. Hey. I mean, you probably should set your laptop up over, oh yeah, like right down here. I'm gonna need to correct. Yeah. See a couple really good trips in the months. Cool. In March, I'm going to down to Central America out of Tampa again. Done that run before, but it hasn't been for a while. So. So you lined up a bunch of you lining up interviews for uh, scale or floss? Uh, it's not lining up ahead of time. I'm going to scale so I can see what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, you're uh, I'm scouting. Scouting. This is going to be interesting. So that was my 75th cruise. Cool. 580 I got six plans this It is very old. It's probably older than me. Oh, old in school. <laughs> what analog yeah. meters is going out? I remember making one for beat kit. Wow. I remember building something where we gave you we build a meter that you were going to use to build the rest of the equipment. Right? <laughs> so they gave you the meter in pieces. You built that, tested it out on itself. Then you start building the rest and you use that meter to know that there's a. I can't remember what the rest of the thing is. Okay, we have audio. We have video. All right. So, so they can hear us, huh? If nothing breaks. What's, what, where's the mic at? Using the mic from the phone. Really? Yeah, so I, 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 I start. 
with, with, you can hear, you can check it out. Um, yeah. It sounds okay. Yeah, you can well, you can hear what they're saying. That's good. So because even most mics that are just tiny and sitting there never do that. Yeah. No, the yeah. iPhone. I I uh, I think iPhone five is awesome. Yeah. They like for live stuff. It's really good. It's like live bands. Is it, does, does it have enough dynamic range so that it can just pop down? Well, it doesn't click. It doesn't click. You know, like some of these yeah, these so Android it, phones, it they must click. Pop, it must pop down. Yeah. No, here it can it can handle. It. Like especially if there's a nice PA, yeah. they, just, they just soak it up. Wow. That's what people say. Why don't you have an Android? It's like, oh, I have a voice ten laptop. Yeah, yeah. And I have an iPhone. They talk well to each other. Right. It's very highly integrated. Sorry, RMS, for enslaving yourselves with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. We're, 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 we've been, oh, we've been, oh, you can lead the song. That's part of our meeting staff. Anybody who's listening and this is Randall over here. The usual happened. Was there a chat room with that? Huh? Was there a chat room with Yes. Oh, Why don't you join it? Okay. Where's it at? It, it's, I invited you, dude. You look, oh, you only post in Google Plus. You don't, you <laughs> no, don't I read. Think I, I think I originally declined it. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I saw that. I was bummed. Glad you're in town, man. Look, how do I get into the invite? Can't you re up? I can invite you. Sit there somewhere. Uh, Invite like, people. I think it's like meetup where you can go back. Oh, uh, Randall. Randall. There you go. No, I just invited you. Right here, it's coming down. Okay. Yeah, you know we've done, we've done, we've had the presenters on Google Hangout. Okay. The presenter was in. We had one on uh, this Freedom Network, which is some mesh network yeah. bit, and we had a guy in Texas, and then a guy in uh, the Midwest or in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, where the big on Oh, that's where you. Yeah. So I guess yeah, they do. They do the paperwork for them. Yes. Good. You don't like it? Go talk to. Uh, <laughs> Siri. Hi. I should keep myself muted so I don't keep interrupting. Yeah, you should mute yourself. Mute, mute. Where's mute? This is mute. I mean, you won't stop talking. Right, yeah, and it's less bandwidth. Sure. But so what the thing when I was trying to... What's the chance to turn it on? I said this is you, me. Well, yeah. That's not a lot of chat. But you can you can be the chat room monitor. Okay. God yeah, forbid the somebody. Well, your phone's not going to say anything. No, it's well, it better be listening to everything. Yeah, start speaking. Well, there. see, that's that's what I was trying to. I tried to clear the speakers, and like, oh, we have this Google Hangout, so yeah. you could have up to you know nine, well, six. I mean, people, you know, like. Yeah. You know, like he's got some buddies that he collaborates with, and they're maybe far from here. They could come in and chime in a little bit. Like for Garrett's talk, right? He was doing a salt talk. He was chatting with uh, somebody from Salt Stack proper and bought the food. I'm like, look, if you got an engineer in Salt Lake, have him join the hangout. He can, uh, you know, uh, chime in, color commentator. But um, most people aren't getting it. Is this on the island afterwards? Oh, yeah, always. You know what? They have proper bars over there. You still want to go to islands? Okay. <laughs> you know what? Oh, yeah, we'll let our special guest call it. Oh, you mean the speaker? No, you. I'm not the special guest. Yeah, well, no, actually, right. These are all Python hackers, wow. right? <laughs> 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 No, but I mean, you hey, if you if you got to you want to call one, we'll we'll do it. We, we've just I've just been doing islands because there's, we can always get a table. They see us, right? Because it's really empty, and it's not, and it's, not and it's not too noisy. It's yeah. pretty dead. That's yeah, what it is. I, every time I go by there, it sort of looks like a it's like a money laundering operation. There's no way they can stay in business with the few people they have. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Well, what I'm thinking is BW3. Uh, What's that? Buffalo but is it too noisy? A BW3. Well, it used to be Buffalo Wild Wings and WEC. Okay. So they sort of got WEC? It's, it's the Buffalo, last Buffalo name? New York. Beef on WEC. Uh, I never heard, never heard of that. I, I had them back in the day when I was going to be the Mitch of Buffalo period. So two of my three seats were there. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a, kind of like a roll with some sort of sprinkly things on the top, make it sort of interesting. It's different. Anyway. Oh, so back when you used to eat carbs. Yeah, back when I used to eat carbs. It's true. Yes. Not doing that anymore. No. It's a little at a time now. That's good. Hey, uh, you, uh, hopefully Lars will be here. Yeah, we should have tipped him off because he 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 got him to the uh, high protein, low carb thing. He's all he's no, doing. Totally. Oh, what are you doing now? Moderate protein, low carb, high fat. Okay. Well, HFMP. No, 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 just LCHF. LC. Okay, LCHF. LCHF. Oh. Ketogenic. That's what ketogenic is. Yeah, everybody thinks it's O H O C H O. Yeah, O O. I don't even know what that is, but it probably explodes. Yeah. Oh, it's open highest fats first. O H F. I'm gonna go like this and play that. That'll show me. Keep everybody juiced up. So is that fairly omnidirectional then? I mean, can you hear the audience when people ask questions? Fairly, yeah, okay. sure. They probably don't project as well as a speaker. No. But the thing, for, well, the thought is if I can just document it, you know? Yeah. Exactly. And it's it's portable, it happens. I can do this every time. Like, I, I, I have a camera. I got, you know, I got that uh, Canon... 60D, but that thing can only shoot video for 20 minutes. So, but Michael brought his uh, 5D, so he's going to do a back. You're going to do the backup, or yeah. stream seems to be working now, but yeah, never. But have you been doing more with salt? Because I know you were. No, I, well, I'm still using it to manage. You, you, just, you just set it and left it. Yeah. Um, got kind of smart at it. Good. Uh, but it's not you, 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 you just since you don't need the math, it's, it's doing what you need. I learned I learned enough to fuck with the next task. It's cool. Kind of like a lot of things. And are you using any other CM systems or? Uh, no. I don't need them. Pretty much all gifts. So and uh, yeah, it's it just suck all the power out of that house. Hey, I don't have to pay for it. Courtesy of uh, Q. Yep. I hate this guy. Nice picture of your coat. Your shirt. Yeah. yeah, it's my new big shirt. At least it stays in focus. Yeah, no, the autofocus works. It's all. Like I said, it's almost <laughs> Batman angle. I just, no, I need like a 25 foot Apple power cord. Let's see. Need an extension? No, no, no. I was joking. When I was shooting the cable access, I would direct. We had all the standard terms like pan and tilt and dolly and things like that. But I was shooting aerobics workout videos. We did some way to say tilt at 45 degrees to the left. For an interesting shot, and so the short version of that became Batman left. Because uh, <laughs> remember the classic Batman series when they were fighting it was always just pain shots. So Batman left, Batman right. First time somebody would hear that, it was what? <coughs> oh, sorry, King Strike. Too young to remember the classic series. Here we go. Yeah, the only problem is there's no like zoom, you know. Oh, you didn't bring your tripod? No. Okay. No worries. 
Okay. Oh, that's my password too. It's <laughs> a good one. Bullet, 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 bullet. Yeah. What if we actually make it password? That'd be cool. That would be cool. <laughs> option eight, option eight, option eight. Yeah, there we go. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure how many passwords you'll Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah, uh, we'll give so it a few more I, minutes to see if people are showing okay, up. Cool. And you probably want to set your left because you're going to be speaking here. Yeah, that's why I don't know how I can control the slides with the short of the video. Cable. That was kind of my oversight. Yeah, no worries. Um, well, but we just, you know, just come by and do it. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, or yeah, this, hey, Calvin, you want to be slide? Slide you up. want to be part of the show, Slide Ops? So just point right a laser at him. Yeah. No yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Shiny guy. Yeah, right. you know, Next. <laughs> come on, wake up. Yeah, I'll give you a thumbs up. Thumbs down means better. Give the computer to somebody. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't sit there. It's kind of like you know when you get on the plane, you yeah. want to sit near the if you, you want to sit near the uh, egg, that side and, door. And this means in at six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's reboot. Yeah. <sighs> Actually, let me get a drink in here. This is stuff seven. Eight or something. So we're still a little bit. Yeah, he's still there. How you doing, man? So you're in right? Yeah. Okay, good to see you. Uh, yeah, we should talk about the. Uh, hey, you know, have, you, have you met Randall? Uh, I'm sure it's Randall Schwartz, host of the Boss Weekly. Ned, Ned works at Chef. I know. He's be doing some sort of chef soon. Um, I want to get something that more, I want to get more into it. Uh, it's not just the intro. So, like, uh, Eric Greenway did a salt talk. Maybe it's just about salting chrome. Okay. So I don't know if you want to think about using Chef to manage something. That's where I was getting into the bare metal division. <coughs> if you have a chance to talk, I know it's not a forte, but no, no, no. Uh, did you talk to your guy? Yeah, yeah, there's a couple of stuff that's you know, put this way, you can talk about that or Chef on hand. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know Chris Weber, right? Yeah. Oh, this yeah, is your demands. Okay. Yeah, it's a small one. How about a chef? Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Well, no, I want, well, I see, I wanted, I still, I want to hear about bare metal for anything. But yeah, and this is good. And oh, by the way, there's a million chefs on Amazon. Well, it's a good topic. So there you go. Yeah. Take a poll. The audience, yeah, crowdsourced it. Done. Yeah. Why do you sing a lot more? Come on, hey, you're a recruiter. You're supposed to be neutral. Telling you what I see, isn't that what you guys want? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of companies people. are actually using Ansible. Really? Salt? salt? Well, I know. I like salt. Well, actually, but remember when during the salt talk in the hand ready, it was like nobody in the uh, like nobody in the crowd. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Randall uses a little bit. You know what? I don't see anymore. There was CF engine. Nope. Yeah. No engine. Yeah. The that granddaddy. Was, I mean, that's the grandfather. <coughs> yeah, yeah. was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
go see if that's the first time. No, shell scripts before that. Nobody likes it. Yeah, there were, first there were shell, shell scripts, scripts, then there were Perl scripts, then shell. <laughs> people using make and deployment. Yes, come on. Let's talk. I still use make for one part of my deployment. Should we get started? I guess I, yeah, I guess people are not walking. So let's start. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the. Uh, actually, I don't want to do the product. <laughs> I'll edit this part out. So that's on this. We're live streaming, so don't say anything. <laughs> you don't want to. Um, so uh, welcome. And I see I get started. And then people start. Oh, it works. Yeah. No, well, they've already been here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the uh, February 2015 UAC LA uh, presentation. Um, the first, we're just going to do some, I guess, membership or whatever, club business, and then we'll get on with our um, presentation. Um, is everybody here on the UAC mailing list, or is anybody here not? On the UAC mailing list, anyone not on there? Okay, cool. All right. So forget that. Well, maybe I should post on there. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay. So we meet here. Well, we meet. We we'll try to meet on the first Thursday of the month. And actually, next Thursday, or, or uh, thir the first Thursday in February. March. The first Thursday in March. Uh, is uh, I, I noticed that there's uh, the Santa Monica Cloud Computing uh, Meetup has somebody from Red Hat talking about OpenShift. And so since it's the first Thursday night and they're already booked in Santa Monica, I think we'll just do a co-presentation. Uh, so come here next Thursday, probably the ones after that. And I'll talk with Carolyn about posting here because I'm trying to line up my next few talks um, so that uh, I can put together a little flyer for scale. So scale, Southern California Linux Expo is uh, February 19th. It starts on the Thursday now through the 22nd. Uh, is everybody registered? Who's not registered for scale? Only because I get in free as a volunteer. Well, they, okay. Who's, who's not <laughs> registered for scale? That's not going to get you free. Because I'm not registered either. Okay, so you're... I assume you're familiar with Scale Southern California Linux Expo. It's held at the LAX Hilton. It's a stone's throw from here. Um, and it is a grassroots uh, open source conference that runs from the Thursday through the Sunday. And if you use the promo code UUASC, the price of admission will be less than what you'll be paying for parking. Especially now that they've added another day that makes the promo code value even better. It's about 30 bucks for the whole thing. Um, there are, the Thursday and Friday are day-long tracks, like uh, DevOps Day LA is on Friday. I'm on the uh, planning committee for that. We'll have some very interesting uh, DevOps-related uh, talks, including a panel on containers and virtualization that should be uh, uh, more open to fistfights if they come. <laughs> um, <coughs> But also there's the UbuCon, all the Ubuntu developers are there, uh, that, and uh, Build Your Own Cloud, Postgres, Randall, our, 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 I guess Randall Schwartz, a big Postgres fan. Those folks, they're going to have, I think they can have tracks going Thursday and Friday. Um, so great, great way to get up to speed with Postgres. Kids on computers as a summer. Oh, scale is great for kids. If you have kids, bring your kids. Saturday night, they have laser tag and pinball games and video games. It's uh, it's it's fun for the whole family. Uh, and yeah, they have the whole scale next generation track. So there's a bunch of stuff there. The scale, all the uh, the I think most of the presentations and stuff have been posted. So we'll see you there. I'm going to put together on the meetup site. I'll put a a meetup invite for scale, and that way, if we want, we can post up stuff there. If we got any hot tips uh, about things or whatever, you got something to check in. Uh, we all kind of plan to be in the same place. One other bit about scale: Friday night, uh, there's going to be a live broadcast, a recording of the uh, Bad Voltage podcast. Uh, Bad Voltage is uh, a podcast of uh, four kind of all-star 
the Nick C podcaster guys, two guys from the old Love Radio podcast, which was a really funny uh, English-based uh, Linux podcast, and uh, somebody from Linux Action Show, and somebody and the guy who runs uh, Linux Questions. Uh, two of those guys hang out at scale every year, John O'Bacon and, and Jeremy, I forgot his last name. But now the whole gang is going to be there. They're flying in Ack, who's I think he's still an Ubuntu developer. He's flying out from London, and Brian Lundu from Linux, formerly of Linux Action Show, he's flying down from Seattle. So it's, they're going to be doing their thing Friday night at 8. That should be a lot of fun. So uh, do try to hang out for that. And uh, so enough about that. Uh, so and I'll have flyers with it in that will be listing the next couple of things. So you can, if you bump into your friends at scale, you can tell them, hey, come here for the talks in March and April and May or what have you. Of course, I'm always looking for additional presenters. So if you'd like to present here at UAC and you have something that you think is interesting and has some sort of a Unix or Linux tangent to it, uh, email me uh, or email leaders at uac.org or Get a hold of me somehow, and you know, give me a title, uh, a sentence or two, what you want to talk about, and uh, um, we can discuss discuss that and slot that. Um, I don't think there's any other uh, group business. Uh, I guess as far as uh, other meetups that are coming up, uh, is, when is when, oh Linux LA, LA. will be uh, the Thursday night. Thursday at night at scale. It'll be uh, Linux containers in yeah. Ubuntu 14 plus. So you can get some ammo for the containers and virtualization panel. We We're get polarized it. there for our DevOps talk on Friday. So, so that'll be at scale. We're Thursday gonna get night. a room there Thursday night. Yeah. And of course, Q will be able to get the little uh, drink in. Chicken meat package, I think. We'll see. Hopefully, something new, some Subway sandwiches or something. Some something easy to sneak, easy sneak portability. Yeah, nothing hot. Sneaking, you know? yeah. So, we're going to have to bring it with us. Um, <laughs> so, for anyone that's not familiar with Q, um, this is Q, and we're a recruiting firm here in LA. We focus just on tech, just in LA, um, and we're just really involved in our community. We host meetups all the time, sponsor meetups, we're involved with scale, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, if anybody you know needs anything that we offer in terms of you know, helping you find a new job, helping you find new people for your work. A 20% um, pay raise? Yeah, a pay raise for sure. Time um, and <laughs> Or even, you know, just like a market read or help with your resume, you know, anything like that. Always happy to help. Um, so I'll be in the back right there. If anybody needs me, just come and talk to me. Um, other than that, um, please recycle. These big ones are for recycle. The little ones are for the trash. Um, you know, I'm forgetting some of those. No, and hey, thank you, Carolyn, and thank you, Q, for... Uh, Hosting the UASC. Of course, I'm happy. Uh, and we'll see you at scale. We'll see yes. us there. We'll um, be at scale. The people who feel we at scale are going to tell you where to go. Uh, we do. Okay, so with no further ado, uh, one of my uh, co workers, uh, uh, Michael, William Michael Turner, is going to talk to us about embedded learning. Hi, everyone. Can we have Michael? This is just about Yeah. Oh, did you bring a power supply? Yeah. You're not going to. And here, well, what is this book going to do? Let's start over here. Oh, uh, that's the projector. If you want, hello. Yeah, we'll <laughs> <laughs> what is the projector? Sorry about this. Yeah, no worries. We'll just start over. And the hang around all the feeds. You're not watching the feed. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. All right, so let, let me just reintroduce you because I cut all the okay. beginning crap out of the video. Oh, by the way, so this this is a streaming via Google Hangouts. It, it goes from Google Google Hangout, and then it goes up to YouTube. So then I, when the presentation's done, I take it down and chop off the beginning and the end and post it back up. So, oh, yeah, let's make sure the projector's working. Oh, and after the uh, presentation, we're going to go across the street to 
B W three, right? Or what is it? Buffalo Wild Wings. Three B. What's your acronym? Buffalo Wild Wings. B W three. B W three. So we'll we'll try going to Bob, we'll try, instead of that uh, islands thing. We'll try Buffalo Wild Wings and uh, have some food and drink and perhaps continue the conversation. So everybody's welcome to join us. And they can arrange one long table there, so they all. Oh, they so they can do that. They, they get small tables so they can make the big tables. Okay, good. All right. So, uh, with no further ado, actually, man, I don't know if we can. Do you want to kill one of these lights? Mm -hmm. with a, uh, yeah, let me get the light in the front. Of course. Thanks. Okay. So, with uh, no further ado, uh, William Michael Turner is going to talk to us about. Uh, Embedding Linux systems in, from a system Linux perspective. Take it away, one. So now more than ever, we're starting to see the rise of embedded Linux in devices. Um, we're seeing it in our phones. We're seeing it in our cars. We're seeing it in our toothbrush. We're seeing it in our refrigerator. And you know, it, it's this thing that is somewhat mysterious because typically how an embedded experience presented to the end user is in a product. And, and the fact that it's Linux really is nothing that we notice unless you were to actually go under the hood and look at it internally. Uh, so you know, what is embedded Linux? How to get it? Uh, you can get it binary. You can get it from source. Uh, now with source, you kind of have two different ways to do it. There's a great utility called BitBake, or you can just download all the source packages, compile it, cross your fingers, and hope it works. So primarily for this talk, uh, I'm going to go over using the BitBake tool to go ahead and create a bootable image uh, and basically create your own custom distribution. Um, so there's some tools that I want to discuss. A light little touch on package management. And then just you know, kind of go over some of the common pitfalls, because now that we're dealing with electronics, we're not dealing with this black box computer. So you're now presented with situations where things that you've done directly to the hardware may present issues to you in the software. So you've got to take that into consideration during this whole experience. So according to Wikipedia, an embedded system is a computer system with a dedicated function in a larger mechanical or electrical system, often with real-time computing constraints. It's embedded as a part of a complete device, often including hardware and mechanical parts. So this is an embedded system, this tablet. This runs embedded Linux. Now, you know, we're all familiar with Android, but that's really just running on top of Linux. Now, <coughs> this stuff you know, comes in various shapes and sizes, too. There's many airplanes that run Linux. But then you've got something tiny like the Intel Edison right here that Intel is pitching as one of their uh, next-gen platforms for wearables. And so you know, this is also an embedded Linux system. So there's no real one-size-fits-it-all uh, kind of thing. So, so typically, in situations where you're seeing embedded Linux, uh, a company has manufactured this thing called a system on a chip. And so a system on a chip takes the actual CPU core and then takes uh, peripherals like like USB or a sound card uh, driver, and actually integrates all of that functionality on one piece of uh, on one die. So you essentially just have one chunk of silicon uh, giving you all that functionality. And so we call that a system on a chip. And you'll see a bunch of them from ARM. Our ARM has been primarily the biggest producer of systems on a chip uh, in the recent future or yeah, recent times. But you do see them from other uh, companies. So yeah, embedded Linux is Linux running in an embedded system. So there's a few popular distributions. Uh, Angstrom is one of them. Then you've got Debian, runs on everything. And then commercially, Wind River Linux is one of the more popular ones. So you're probably not going to find any device that we're going to go to the store and buy running Wind River. Wind River is typically more for high reliability environments such as creating like a Linux network that's controlling sensors on an airplane or running some sort of uh, factory automation and control. Um, so 
as is expected probably, it's not at all like installing Linux on a desktop server. You, you don't download an ISO, boot it up, run through a text-based installer, or run through a GUI-based installer. Uh, you have to essentially figure out how do I want to install this? What, what does installing it even mean? And so that's what I want to go over uh, next. So kind of an obvious disclaimer. You're going to have to have a kernel that has all the right modules for your particular system on a chip. And you don't get that for free. So ARM, the way the ARM cores work is there's a few that the intellectual property for them is public domain. So what companies are doing in making these socks is they're downloading the ARM, like an ARM7 core, and then adding a whole bunch of functionality to that open model, and then having the IC produced. So the company then is going to have to ha add special kernel modules that are outside of regular ARM7 kernel modules to support the peripherals they added. So that's where it gets a little bit nitty gritty with compiling a kernel for a sock. Um, now, depending on the company also, they may not be too forthcoming about what they actually did. So there's a lot of reverse engineering that goes along uh, with uh, embedded Linux kind of stuff. Uh, whoa. One second. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the incredibly complicated uh, path that we can choose of how to get embedded links. So, starting over here on the right, the simplest way to do it is, I'm sure many of you have played with the Raspberry Pi, and, and you can download a uh, Raspbian image from it and just DD it to your flash card and you're good to go. You've got a computer you can play with in minutes. So that, that's taking the binary route to getting an image. And that's that's definitely the path that most people are going to want to go when they're trying to get something done or trying to prototype something. But but now let's say you're making a product and you know you, you have some concerns like you don't you need to know what packages are on there. You don't want to take, you know, you're not using OpenSSL, but you don't want to risk having a heart bleed, you know, OpenSSL version on your product. Or basically, you've got to take security into consideration. So you decide to go the source route. So with source, you can use BitBake, uh, or you can go manual. I no one, not very many people really go manually just because you don't have any dependency resolution. Um, and you'd mainly see that if you were co collaborating directly with the SOC manufacturer. Now, uh, one of the most common ways, aside from using BitBake, is to do this sort of hybrid way. And so with that, what you're doing is you're downloading a pre-compiled root file system. Um, Ubuntu Core actually provides a nice ARM root file system. But then you're going ahead and compiling your kernel um, custom to match that SOC. So the, the hybrid way and the bit bake way are probably the, the two most popular uh, custom ways of building it. So bit bake, like I was mentioning, is a utility to automate the building of these images completely from source. Um, it's based on Gentoo's portage system. So it does handle dependency resolution, but that can also be a two-edged two sword. So I don't know if well, kind of an analogy is with Gentoo, like you can compile GNOME without PNG support, and that's not a dependency, but you're just not going to have any icons. So BitBake, in much the same way, is going to only take care of what's actually required to get all of the code compiled, not what's required to give you a fully functional image. So it does 85% of the work for you with regards to that. So pros. Dependency resolution, automated image compilation, and it's really structured. Now the cons are it's very, very, very slow. You're, you're compiling a whole entire operating system from source here, so you shouldn't expect to do this, you know, in, on your coffee break. Now, as a con, I also said structured, which is kind of confusing. But the reason that might be a con, let's say, is if you're just trying to quickly get a piece of software that you just wrote into your image, and you, you're using a BitBake system, well, you need to be sure that you write a proper BitBake recipe so that BitBake knows how to compile that code and include it into the operating system. 
So it, it's not a big deal, and it really is the best way to do it, but it's an additional hurdle that you have to you know, jump <coughs> Um This one got me when I was working on this. So if you have an encrypted home directory, uh, or you, you're not going to be able to run BitBake on an encrypted partition. That's just not going to happen. Um, Won't bake. Yeah. Um, so BitBake is really easy to download. Um, it's worked on as part of the Yocto project. So you can just go there, get it, um, and you just see a really simple directory structure when you, when you first get it. Um, so you have a conf folder. And in the conf folder, you have dblayers.conf. Now, th this is like the basic configuration file that defines where all of the code is uh, that you're going to compile and what's going to compile. Um, and then you've got your local.conf. And local.conf is used for machine-specific uh, machine configurations. So that's where you're going to be like tuning your compiler for amount of threads, number of uh, processes, running, uh, anything like that. Um, these are some scripts that you uh, would use more if you were actually actively doing development, not so much necessarily for just compiling an image. Um, but it's, it's for listing patches. Uh, it's all the patches are getting applied. Yes? If I could, um, uh, what's a layer? So I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Yeah. Um, so the, I'll just talk about it now. So the BitBig layer is basically a bunch of metadata about code that defines it as a package, essentially. So everything everything that you want that's an application inside BitBake has its own layer. And so, you know, for something like GNOME, let's say, well, you don't, you, obviously you're not going to have just one layer for GNOME because it's like a huge ecosystem of pieces. So with that, you have what are called meta layers. And so you can see here, these are, um, Metal, this is a meta layer that adds support for Beagle points. Um, this is just the base Angstrom meta layer. And so that's a layer that contains configuration uh, for other layers and what layers are included in that layer. Uh, so that, that's kind of the, the gist of that. And so this, this is the sources file. And when you run BitBay, you don't have to go download the code. It points to uh, Git repos where all the meta layers are. So that, that's kind of the beauty of it, is once you find you know, a piece of software you want, all you really need is the URL uh, to the repo on Git, and you can add it to your bblayers.com uh, and your uh, layers.txt, and it's integrated into your environment right there. Can, so, you, can you freeze it at a SHA-1? No, when something's known to be good, but the other might not work. Just his head there, I was wondering. If oh, yeah, yeah, no, you can use whatever branch you want. All right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, so... It makes, you know, reduces the complexity of this sort of thing greatly. It, it's interesting that it's it's using a distributed, right, re revision control system to build a, I guess, what could be, a, well, I guess it's a standalone operating system. It's yeah. Very interesting, and pull, but pulling from different sources, it could be completely different sources. And, and that's an issue that you run into sometimes. So when I was working on this for the Edison, I noticed that there were quite a few missing mirrors, and that's a little bit disconcerting, especially when Intel is telling you, you know, use this mirror. And so at, at that point, you've got to find another mirror, compare the versions of all the code, and, you know, try and see if it's going to work. So, you know, this is not really something you'd want to do in production. If you were going to produce one of these devices, you'd want to pull the code down, put it in your own Git repo so you can control it. Well, is but, there, are, are there, like, check? Validation scripts, or has somebody written something like that uh, to to check and see if all the the mirrors are right, and then it, then if so, not exactly. It? Okay, so not there yet. No, not there yet at all. So it's in the, so yeah, this folder is empty right now, but this is where all the source code is going to be when we actually run the thing. So kind of explain that. Uh, oh yeah, and so. BitBake itself, the application, is defined in here because we haven't actually downloaded BitBake. We just downloaded some scripts that help us get BitBake. So we've got our open embedded BitBake shell script. And th this is what we're going to use to grab all of our source code and be sure that the proper environment variables are set for our target machine build. So it pulls in the BitBake recipes from Git as we find in the layers.txt file. 
And then you can also use it to cl do, uh, clean the build, view the change log, download updates, and, and board split packages. So just kind of a general note on building the kernel that's pretty much true for anything else. There's going to be a lot of modules that you don't need. I, I personally don't see any benefit in compiling fiber channel kernel modules on a Raspberry Pi. What? <laughs> so that's so much better. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's kind of you know the, the whole reason we even care to do this is we're trying to build this lean mean system that does only what we want and does it really well. So with that in mind, let grab some knot. Oh, oh, back. Okay. That's good. Uh, I've been looking for fiber channels for my Raspberry. You know, it would be, it would be pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, USB bridge port. So, in, in general, when you actually download BitBake, if you were to run a few commands, it'll run. But, but for the exercise of going ahead and making a custom image, we'll go ahead and we'll edit our local.com file, we'll edit DB layers, and we'll edit layers.txt so we can add some extra software. Uh, the image that you get if you build without doing it any modification is very, very, very vanilla, uh, and in many cases, my money. So, that in mind, this is uh, done in your local.com. You don't have to do this, but I mean, we all have multi core processors now, so we may as well use them. So, this is just typical make configuration uh, for the number of parallel makes and the number of threads that BitBake is going to run. Typically, you know, you're going to want to do that to be the number of cores on your CPU, and then however the uh, threading scheme works out for your CPU, which differs by manufacturers, so I don't really want to recommend one. Um, so this is where you get the base layers uh, file. And so this comes pre-populated with a whole bunch of these that are just included with open embedded. So let's say, for instance, though, like our image has no need for XFCE because we're running headless. So just delete that line. Now we're not going to compile XFCE. Nothing's included there. Uh, you know we don't need Java either. We don't need Qt. We can go ahead and get rid of those lines. So the only ones that you cannot delete are the ones that are for your board support. So there's this kind of idea of a board support package, and that's what contains all the kernel modules necessary for your system on a chip. So. On a board like this, uh, the system on a chip on this is manufactured by a company called Allwinner, and the, for whatever reason, their software uh, for the kernel is called SunZ. And so for this, uh, when I was building images for this, I, I delete all the other board support packages for like the BeagleBone, for the Raspberry Pi, for the Edison, and only leave the one for SunZ. Because even though they might not end up in your target image, you're still going to download them, you're still going to compile them, and it's going to add hours to your build time. So moral of the story, don't compile things you don't need. So like I was saying, we don't want to end up with just this super minimal system that doesn't even have bash on it and just gives us a busy box shell. So in the bblayers.com file, you can add this, your, uh, this environment variable image install and just add common software packages to that. So you're not going to get like an easy list of what software packages are available in the recipes that you have. But what you can do is just grab for them um, and it's fairly easy to figure out the package name. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a manual process. And now that we've made some configurations, we're pretty much ready to go build. So this is what like a typical build process looks like. You run the OEBB SH script, the open embedded bitbake, to configure. And so this board, actually, this board I've got right here is an Olamex Olenixino A13. And so when you do the config, it's telling it, OK, I need to go ahead and download a few more recipes that match this board. So do that, pulls everything in from Git. That empty sources directory that we saw earlier is now full of our operating system source. So our environment has been prepared. So the way BitMake works is it sets tons of environment variables and uses that. So prior to running BitMake, we've got a source for our whole entire Angstrom environment. And that's included in the directory uh, when you download BitMake. 
So specify the machine, run bit bake console image. Um, and so a console image is going to actually give you the full image that you're ready to go ahead and write to your SD card and boot up from. Now, at the same time, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you only want to build a kernel. Well, rather than doing a bit bake console image, you can do bit bake virtual kernel and only compile a kernel. Um, you can actually specify individual recipes uh, when doing that to get that granular. So you do that, the build starts, uh, and I would definitely <coughs> recommend grabbing some coffee and a beer for when your build fails because it will. <laughs> so fail. you have something to cry in. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of things that can go wrong when you're compiling an OS completely from source. And so, so one of the things that I encountered was some, uh, some of the mirrors uh, for some of the recipes were out of sync. And so with that, there were like patches that weren't applied in some. Or one, uh, one layer needed patch, you know, version A, patch revision 2 of a, a package, and the other one needed patch revision 3. And so this is now stuff that BitBake is not going to solve these problems. You have to solve these problems, and you have to. You may even have to look at the code and, and realize, okay, well, is it only saying that it needs this revision of the patch because the, the maintainer of that code wants to just use the latest thing, or does it in fact need it? So during the build process, you might have to make some nitty-gritty decisions that could really affect you know, the quality of your build. So, Definitely got to test out what you're doing and uh, think a little bit. This is kind of, you know, when the build breaks down, sadly, you're no longer in automated land. Uh, you're on email news groups and doing some heavy digging. Um, so all of this is great to know, but what do we put it on? How do we boot it up? And, and what tools, you know, do we even need to be able to play with this stuff? So it's essential that you have patience. Otherwise, you're going to pull your hair out, you're going to step on your board, and you'll be done. Done a lot faster than if you're playing with it you know, more. But <laughs> uh, So one of the things that I highly recommend uh, getting is this device right here. This is called a, a Bus Pirate. And what's pretty cool about the Bus Pirate is it's a, got a USB serial bridge on it. But it not only does it let you talk to serial, it lets you talk to a bunch of different buses. You can connect this and talk to I squared C bus, spy bus. You can even connect this to your car and talk to it on the CAN bus. So this is kind of like the Swiss Army knife of getting your computer connected to embedded protocols or just you know standard electronics, digital communications. Now this this sells for about twenty bucks. Not necessary. You could use a five dollar serial to USB cable. Now, the, the kicker here, though, is there's three common different voltages. So I believe the Raspberry Pi operates on five volts through the serial. Well, this Edison guy here, for whatever reason, Intel decided they're going to use 1.8 volt TTL. So if you decide to use a 3.3 volt TTL cable on a 1.8 volt device, what do you, you think is going to happen? Not going to smoke. Right? Yeah, it's, it's going to smoke. You're not going to have a good time. And it dies instantly. There's zero recovery from that. You've fried the core. So it's important to have a good serial USB adapter. Now, the next one might sound kind of silly, um, but you need SD cards, typically. Uh, the only way to get around SD cards is a lot of uh, embedded devices are shipping with onboard NAND memory right now. But the kind of the downside of that is if you brick a bootloader, on a chip that's soldered onto a board, you're going to have one hell of a time getting a new bootloader on it without some you know, really more sophisticated uh, equipment, like a JTAG cable. So definitely, if you're looking at getting a board, I would really recommend getting one that has an SD card. You can put it in your computer, read it. Um, so also, you need a, a board. So you got the, there's two versions of the Intel Edison one. There's this tiny guy. And all of the I.O. is on the back here. Now, th this is kind of a pain. Um, I think this one is a little bit more friendly. This is also an Intel Edison board. Now, what's interesting about the Intel Edison is it's actually an x86 system on a chip. 
So it's kind of special. Uh, now, for various reasons, when Intel launched the Edison, they wanted to make it an open source product. Now, unfortunately, their version of open source, or their, their definition of open source, meant release it with no documentation and let the community figure out how to use it and not even tell you about broken features. So, one, I was working on getting Bluetooth Low Energy working with this. And I'm looking on the forums, a lot of people are having difficulties um, with a message that says, cannot connect to phone, cannot connect to phone. So, I'm thinking, well, I don't want to write Bluetooth code before I can actually just use their own utility to test it. I mean, that seems to make sense. So, barring that logic, I go ahead and I write some Python code. Well, sure enough, the Bluetooth does in fact work, and the firmware that Intel put on here by default is wrong. So, you got to always watch out for things like that. Uh, and that, it's horrible to say, but basically, unless you built the image yourself and you know exactly what's in it, it's very hard to trust an image, just from my experience. So, for reasons like that, for support, I wouldn't really necessarily recommend the Edison so much. Uh, now, this board right here is made by a company uh, in Bulgaria called Olamex. And this is like an open source system on a chip. Um, it's got a bunch of I.O. And what's cool about this guy is it actually has a SATA port. So if you're looking to you know, make a little uh, home NAS server or uh, you know, something to store your pictures on, this is a great way to go. You don't have to use a USB bridge. Now, there, there's quite a bit of support for these online. But what's really nice about this is there's also quite a lot of support just for the system on a chip. So when I uh, made an image for this presentation, I made my image um, with the SunZ sources uh, for this guy. Um, definitely are going to want to have a good power supply. This is going to sleep. Now, a good power supply doesn't have to be something like this behemoth over here. Uh, but a good power supply is going to need to be able to deliver at least two amps. And so I'll, I'll cover that a little bit more in the pitfalls um, section. But, you know, other, other things you might want to have, an oscilloscope could be nice if you're trying to, you know, pulse something, you need to make sure it's a certain frequency. Um, you know, you're not really going to, you, you can't trust the software. And the reason you can't trust the software, unless you're using DNA uh, routines, is that you know you have this operating system that's doing things. So just because you're telling it, turn this pin on, wait 50 milliseconds, then turn it off, well, it's doing that at its own convenience, so to speak. So you know, if you, you're not really going to be able to do any precise timing directly from within a Linux OS. So that, that's kind of a different pop uh, in and of itself, though. So, so bus pirates are really easy to use. Um, just open it up with screen, and then you get presented a menu system. And so we can actually um, play around with all this stuff later. Uh, and so now we're in, and now we've booted up our image, and we're, we're in. So I, I probably should have mentioned that we're connecting via serial port to our image. We don't have a display on it. So that, that's pretty common. Um, if I had to venture a guess, more embedded boards do not have displays than do have displays. So things like the Raspberry Pi is definitely the exception. And, you know, so it doesn't mean that it's impossible to get one, but definitely don't take that as something that you're giving. So now this is really cool too. So let's say you just wanted to play with this and you don't have a board. You're not really that interested in getting one, but you kind of just want to test your image building food. So you can actually boot these guys up in QEnote. So um, I have an NRD and a kernel that you can use to boot it up. Um, that will be on my blog uh, probably tomorrow. Um, and so that's what the heinous command looks like to run it. Um, but, but really all you're doing is you're using the QEnote for ARM. Uh, you're setting your kernel. You're setting your init RAM disk. You're telling it inside this image file where the root is going to get mounted uh, and then treat it like a virtual SD card. 
And then here, this is so you could possibly have networking enabled, assuming you had networking configured right on your actual host machine, which sadly, if you're using Wi-Fi, is entirely non-true. Uh, so here is actually an image I compiled booting up, and you can see this. Uh, so these are actually quite a bit slower in QEMU than they are on the actual device. Uh, Yes, yeah, it's not a perfect image. Yeah. <laughs> so another another thing that you might that might cause some issues, a lot of embedded systems don't have real time clocks on them. So you need kind of a way to come up with that, as everything pretty much depends on on a clock. So you can use NTP, but now how do you deal with a situation where it's been shut down for a really long amount of time and you want to reboot it? So that's you know the sort of issue that's kind of left up to the end user to figure out. Uh, so there's not too much to show here. We can exit out of that if you see the. So pitfalls. This happened to me.